That's that time in the morning when we look at how some of the main stories of the day are being reported in the international newspapers. And joining me in the studio is a Zimbabwean journalist, Tamzan Kushu. And very good, good morning. morning to good you. Morning, We're going to start with this day, as we always do. Yeah, this is the yes. Nigerian we... newspaper. Quite a few yep. stories here that have grabbed the attention, but this one really stands out. An 8 billion naira currency scam. Yeah, but, but it's something that started um, way back in September. Um, what they are saying is that the Central Bank of Nigeria, um, you know, sometimes there are, there are notes that are returned to the bank. Mm. Uh, there's a process that is supposed to be uh, followed there. But uh, in the Ibadan, um, uh, you know, in some of the, the branches, they said some of the officials in the bank decided to convert um, up to 8 billion naira to uh, their own use and bought houses in South Africa and all the but it's a trial that is going on so it, we it, don't know how it's going to end sure but it does have this incredible resonance doesn't it because in this country we talk about the behavior of, of bankers in fact we've got a trial going on at the moment involving LIBOR the uh, yeah. fixing of the currency exchange yes. rate and yes. this whole culture about bankers being out of control and they have to be brought to book and it's actually quite interesting seeing that a similar dynamic is at play in Nigeria you've got this trial which is going on and some rather mm. unpleasant things yeah, emerging well, uh, yeah, and it's used money. Yeah, I understand in this part of the world they used to joke that if you work in a bank you can be broke because there is money around you, you should find a way of using that. But it's, uh, it's quite interesting also that there's, um, there's one of the, the accused who, when he was brought before the court, said, well, he could not speak English. Uh, he wanted uh, a Yoruba interpreter, and they started asking questions. How then do you have 112 million naira in your bank account, and you work for the central bank, exactly. and you can't speak English when it is the media of communication in that... Uh, and this that was in the central bank? Yes, which the Central Bank it, of Nigeria. Which makes it even worse, really. But again, it's that oh, same they thread. They don't believe him. Sure, yes. sure. But, it, but it's still that same thread of bankers yes. who are out of control, somehow yeah. cocking a snook at the system because they feel they, they can do it and get away with it until the net closes in on them. Yeah, and there are a lot of people who are angry that bankers don't behave. Um, and many also believe that they are spoiled. They having access to a lot of money mm. there's so much um, that goes on and this fraud if this is proven then that would be a bad bad thing for sure. Nigeria. Could it actually lead to reforms in the banking sector though because it's it, this is a lot of money and it's the fact that it happened within the realms of the central bank that makes it even more damning. Well they will say that they initiated uh, this investigation in September uh, as a bank and uh, they have already corrected the systems to make sure that nobody else he has got access uh, to to means of breaking the rules. Sure. Oh, we wish them well in that. <laughs> okay, let's move on now to another big story, one which we've been headlining our bulletins with, in fact, and this is <clears throat> FIFA, the ongoing saga. Now, there are two lines to this. On the one hand, let's start first with the independent, the latest line. Yeah. Now, this involves uh, this, this gentleman called Chuck Blazer, the guy in the right of the <coughs> photograph behind him, of course, Seth Blatter, who dramatically resigned the presidency of FIFA a few days ago. But uh, these revelations from Chuck Blazer really have thrown the cat amongst the pigeons, haven't they? Well, it, it looks like all along what FBI have been working on is information that came through uh, Chuck Blazer. Those that don't know him, he is American. His son started playing football and he became involved increasingly until he was the Secretary General of uh, uh, the CONCACAF, which is the confederation that mm. runs football. That's Africa and the Caribbean. Yeah, yeah. Uh, North America, Central America, and the Caribbeans. And he was working with Jack Warner, who was the vice president of FIFA. And um, he's uh, the one that Putin said looks like Karl Marx. What, is, what he basically did is he was arrested for tax uh, avoidance mm. way back in 2011, and then agreed, or he's understood to have agreed to work with the FBI, and was wired during the meetings that he was having with so, this was really, so his cooperation was self-protection? Yes. Yes, it, it, it was. And what, sure, what, but protection what, against being, being well, effectively done on, on tax yeah, charges. Because, because uh, he was earning a lot of money, but he was not paying, paying tax taxes for, or the full for a very long taxes. time. Yeah, so what they're saying is he's got, uh, he recorded a lot of FIFA officials uh, for even during the London 2012 games and beyond uh, because he remained within FIFA sure. after he had been arrested. So they, so they assumed well, when they were talking, they were talking to one of their own, so yes. to speak. That's yes. the central allegation. Yeah, they spoke was, more freely. Yeah, he was still a member of the executive and yeah. recording everything that he was uh, 
it was that was going on at the time. And so this is uh, information that many believe, uh, even Seb Blatter, uh, would have realized there's no other way if your conversations were recorded and the FBI have got everything uh, on a silver plate. Sure. So we don't know where this is going to lead. Well, we don't, we don't. But what's, what's interesting is, is Blazer's lifestyle, because certainly the article throws a light on that, that uh, his position meant that he was friends with um, the likes of Vladimir Putin. Also the claim that uh, he had an expensive apartment in Manhattan Trump Tower. One flat was for himself, but the other was for his cats. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, and, and he $4, pays a lot of a month. It, it might be more than that, actually, because <laughs> this is a, uh, the Trump building is one of the uh, luxurious ones sure. in, the, in that part of the world. Well, but at least the cats appreciated it. Yes. But certainly if we, if we move on to the Wall Street Journal Asia, again, they're running with the thief story, a different take that You've got all these accusations coming on, and now comes a challenge to find somebody who can lead the organisation, not just through this period of turbulence, but beyond, because there is a massive cleaning up act that needs to be done here. It's, it's a big problem for FIFA, uh, because on one hand, uh, a lot of people are saying, right, let's have new people who can clean up FIFA, let FIFA have a totally different face. But their rules don't allow outsiders to be part of that race. And the argument and, is you yeah, need the, an outsider. There's, there's, uh, the Europeans are pushing for Michel Platin to, to stand, but then you also have the Secretary General, Jerome uh, Volk. Jerome who is, Barker. Yeah, he is mm. also French. But uh, we have to stress as well that um, even though Michel Platini has always been a close ally of, of Sepp Blatter, he has not been implicated in any of these allegations, no. and he has denied any wrongdoing. No, but uh, it, it, many people are saying if he decides to stand, then those that are, you know, uh, uh, the, the European ones might decide not to stand, or even Prince um, Al Hussein yeah, might not Prince stand. Hussein, yes. So, but but we, we don't know how, how that's going to pan out. Right. Okay, Tam, we have to leave it there, but I have a suspicion that we'll be talking about FIFA. And the latest chapter in the corruption saga for some time to come. But for now, thank you very much.